Welcome, Cancer North Node people of the Honeybee You Tarot Hide. My name is Melissa. Melissa means honeybee. And of course, you are the hive. And this channel was started uh, as part of just sort of my own why and believing that um, or wanting to be a part of the collective healing and teaching based on my own experiences and understanding that we're all connected. Reading cards has become one way uh, to facilitate that. I I'm going to admit to you that this has already been a very emotional uh, reading for me as I've pulled your uh, oracle cards and I believe that I'm going to kind of put an alert out there that I do believe everyone should should listen to this I haven't even done your reading I've just seen the cards and I don't know if I'm going to make it through this reading. So I guess if you see it, you see it. And if you don't, who <laughs> cares? You're going to be watching something else, but later. Um, so I'm going to go for it. If you don't mind, I want to share a little bit of my process with you. Um, generally, I make sure that I'm cleansing the cards before every reading. Um, I cleanse particularly all the decks that I know that I'm going to be using and um, and after a series I will cleanse all of them. I also set my intentions and I say my prayers before every reading. Um, I say my prayers and set my intentions before any interaction I have with any client as I am also a licensed professional counselor um, and my goal is always to help to provide you know hope and connection back to one's own highest self and um, source so I set my intentions and then for these readings I really look at the stones and my crystals that I have and I, I kind of see which ones are really I always say poking me in the eye really calling to me um I felt compelled to put away all of those that felt or are more about grounding um I've you know about the heaviness with the respect with the exception to this Apache tear and I said out loud as I was kind of doing my thing like wow it's really weird I feel this real sense that cancer just needs A lot of love and it's not like unusual I mean anybody that knows anything about cancer I mean that's you know mother moon um, lots of emotionality uh, but I don't know it was it was something that I said aloud to myself and I was kind of intrigued because I think I've really been pulling from some um, messages and places that say, you know, we really need a lot of balance. And I'm not saying that you don't, I, you know, because I don't, I haven't done the reading yet. But you seem to so far be, you seem to so far be embodying that part of the collective that needs its mother and at the same time can provide that, you know, sort of nurturing energy. I got to turn my light down. I feel like I'm 
super bright. Um, so again, I don't normally read the Oracle cards, all of the Oracle cards that come out. However, when yours came out, I, think, I feel like I keep saying this. Um, I have to read them all. I'm not going to read the past life or the current purpose cards necessarily. Well, I will discuss them. But I am going to read the Wild Unknown Archetypes cards, three of them. Um, two of them came out and one of them was on the bottom of the deck. You might hear me sound kind of nasally right now because I was already crying. Like, this is collective wounding child, mother child stuff and it's so, I don't know, I guess the only word I could say was um, when I have these experiences, for me, it is the definition of awesome. What do you do when you are in the presence of, you know, God, spirit, mystery, magic? How do you, there's a certain delight, there's a certain delight in magic and you know all of that but there's also sometimes such a humility and poignancy and recognition that can't escape that we are all a part of this Thing, this process, this um, eternal existence that, I don't know, it's just overwhelming. And so I'm just going to get into the reading now. Apologize. I'm going to put that this is for everyone, but it is, you know, specifically mostly for you, Cancer North Node. Uh, people. So the cards that came out. The first one was Orphan. Can you see that child's hand? And the snake. Wrapping around in a ring, coiled around it, with what looks like maybe a high bit. I'm not sure what that petal is, what that flower is, right? I don't know. And if I did, I would look up the meaning of it, but I don't, and I don't have time. But it is a number five, so change, with change comes conflict. Um, we all have an inner child. And right now, um, I think you are dealing with this orphan um, archetype. And I think that we all are. We actually just exited the Cancer Capricorn karmic nodal axis. And you'll understand more as we move through this reading uh, why I want to include everyone in this reading. But, you know, how can you or anyone be going through all of the changes and upheavals that we are experiencing and not feel connected in some way to that archetype of the orphan child. The one that has been abandoned. 
the one that has been left behind. Even as much as your logic knows, you're not the only one. This is an archetypal energy. So let me read it. The wounded child, the abandoned, the beggar. some snippets before I read what she wrote. I'm going to read every single, you know, like I said, you got three cards. I'm going to read them all. It would be a disservice not to. So tenderness beyond tenderness is required. Like I said, it was like I was looking at these stones and going, wow, like we are not even dealing with the grounded and this is all about the heart this is all about love this is all about compassion this is all the soft you know the softy soft love stuff tenderness beyond tenderness is required imagine holding yourself in your hands to recognize that each one of us fears rejection and isolation is to take one step toward the orphan. More kindness always. Access this archetype through creative acts like drawing, painting, or writing. Keep it simple. Ask the orphan what it wants to draw, make, or say. So I think this for you in particular, Cancer North Node, is to really get in touch deeply with your inner child and allow it to express itself um, and kind of let go of this adult energy that's surrounding it, um, that it has to problem solve, that it has to um, express its you know righteous indignation or solve the problem i think for you right now it's important that you are expressing your not only grief but maybe the powerlessness maybe the fear maybe the abandonment um, sense that you feel. And that doesn't mean that you stay there forever. It's just a recognition and it's one that we all need to experience. Okay, and, there, and I'm gonna say more about that in a, in a minute, but. When in light, deep solace, deep, deep acceptance and deep love. When dark, distanced, hates and avoids, controlling and limiting. So, you know, we can look at the news and we can say, wow, how is that person's inner child being expressed right now? What, what, are, what is being expressed by the people that are seeking to control others or are um, hating, expressing hate. It's the dark side of the same coin of needing to express a deep grief and a sadness for being left on one's own. You know, we all have this child, okay? So it doesn't take away from other parts of you, but this is an archetype. So, this, to study the orphan is to study the deep and challenging energy of our time. This was published, copyrighted in 2019. So this is very much our present. Uh, we are ever more connected yet face collective isolation. The refugee crisis haunts our planet. Children are separated from parents and the earth begs for our attention. We are in a time of universal orphanage, of nature, of each other.
of our own hearts. Take refuge in the fact that we all share this core wound and dilemma. It is normal to fear this card as it haunts the caverns of the soul. When it, when it appears, take time, real time, really take time to be in the presence of the feelings this card stirs in you. Let it humble you. When we see people lashing out and hating others and blaming others and raging, those people don't have the capacity or the ability to admit and sit in the vulnerable space of the orphan. And yet, what they are experiencing is no less the orphan archetype than what it feels like in the way we express the sadness, the isolation, the need for comfort, the humility. If you were a friend of mine, I could talk to you and say something, you know, completely that might sound very different, you know, like I, I make judgments on, on people that I see behaving in certain ways. And yet I do, I do understand the sickness behind the pain behind the behaviors of hateful people. And it doesn't absolve them. Absolutely not. But if you can stay in the light of this orphan archetype, that we all, all, all are experiencing, are all experiencing, I don't know what I'm um, then please allow that inner child to express itself in all of its vulnerability. Let me reread this. It is normal to fear this card as it haunts the caverns of the soul. When it appears, take time, real time, to be in the presence of the feelings this card stirs in you. Let it humble you. What are you starving for? What is the deepest gift you could imagine giving to others? What has been rejected is quite possibly what is most needed, dear one. So within this or archetype is also the healing mother. Which magically and interestingly was the second card that came up. The womb. So many things I want to say about this. I'm not going to. I'm just going to read from the book. But I do think that we need to recognize that something is
waiting to be birthed and birthing pains are not easy. Extremely, excruciatingly painful. But what is in the womb? The nest, the belly, the origin. What would honoring the feminine look like to you? Where would you begin? Imagining yourself as loved is a good place to start. That is so hard for a lot of people. Imagining, like the fact we have to imagine ourselves as loved. Hmm, I imagine I'm loved. Like not knowing that already says a lot. You know, it's in this book of archetypes. Um, there's a lot of us that did not know that, just didn't, wasn't taught, never got it. It just, I have to work, right? I got to hustle for uh, love. I've got to prove myself worthy. I have to um, please others. I have to give up parts of myself in order to get those scraps of love. And, um, you know, sad Consider that Mother Earth must also have a mother. Imagine her. One of the spirits or entities or energies that I call in um, is, you know, uh, well, I call in Mother Mary, but I also call in Mother Gaia, Mother Earth. You know, we are part of her. We return to her at death. And um, at least our physical bodies do. Why wouldn't you want Mother Gaia? And how do we ignore her? How how is that even happening? Right? Like, I don't know. Um, I apologize if this sounds like a soapbox or preachy, but this is my channel and my reading, and that's what I'm gonna say. Um when in light, nourishment, harmony warmth and love when dark stricken ecological crisis infertility and imbalance for me as i look at this i see the potential i see you know inside of the womb there's the potential like what are we about ready to birth are we about ready to birth nourishment Harmony, warmth, and love? Or are we going to birth being stricken, an ecological crisis, infertility? Are we a fertile world, abundant world, creative world, or not? And imbalance. Are we in balance? What are we going to birth? Everything has an origin story. The womb archetype asks us to contemplate the beginning beyond the beginning. The mother beyond the mother. In a world that often negates the power and necessity of feminine principles, this card returns us to the warmth, tenderness, and sacred intelligence from which we came. It is the card of receiving, not achieving. I think that's why I had to put away like all of my sort of like more grounded root chakra solar plexus I've got this little baby baby one here but um so okay. anyway uh I apologize for getting off that this card returns us to the warmth tenderness and sacred intelligence from which we came 
is the card of receiving, not achieving, of accepting love from the mother of us all. She is the life-giving force that forgives and cherishes even the most wounded and desperate soul. No matter, no matter how lost you are, two sides of the same coin, the womb awaits your return to help you heal and grow. This card is a call to keep things simple, to return, to be reborn in the name of love. The womb is everywhere. It is beyond gender, beyond time. We are within it and it is within us. is beyond gender, is beyond time. We are within it and it is within us. No matter how lost we are, Okay, oh, sorry. Okay. So the bottom of the deck was the ring. I don't know if you can see sort of like within the shape of what looks like an eyeball kind of eye is the cosmos. And there are rings encircling it. And as we move out, we see more of the cosmos, right? Okay, so this is the bottom of the deck, the energy that moves past to the present into the future. The infinite, the wheel, the connection. Study images of the mandala, the unus mundus, mundus, unus mundus, the Ouroboros, and the medicine wheel. Ouroboros, I believe, is this kind of the same as like the snake that you know, its tail connects, or it might be the dragon, I can't remember, but you can look that up. Take stock of the jewels you adorn yourself with. Watch out for rings you wear out of habit that keep you connected to the old you. Everything has energy. So, I wear different rings, but I tend to ha have like these patterns of where I am in, in time and for probably eight to ten years I wore a labor giant labradorite ring I still wear it uh, periodically but I had this real aching and calling to move into something else and I got this moon ring um, and I, I allow myself to just kind of go with whatever it, I don't know what's gonna call me. I really wanted a, a, a turquoise ring. I'm very much connected to crystal cola. But no matter what I did, I just kept getting called back to the moonstone ring. So I bought myself a moonstone ring. Now I've got some fire opal. Um, but, you know, even in our wedding rings, even in our you know, rings that we think, well, gosh, you know, I spent so much money and blah, blah, blah. Well, those energies are from different times. And when they're time to go and we've outgrown something or we've leveled up, it's time to send them send them on, on their way. But anyway, the ring is an, an image of connectedness rather than viewing life as linear, as a series of progressive achievements. The ring challenges us to sense the cyclical, infinite nature of our world and experiences. Beginnings and endings fall by the wayside as we practice seeing ourselves as part of the cosmic circularity of creation. <laughs> and I want to talk about it. Okay, it's all now. Okay, it's all now. 
So while in one sense our mind sees a linear progression of history and mistakes made, it's all now. And we can heal things making new choices with new information. And that's such a limited way of explaining this, but it's what I'm going to say for right now. For this reason, it's no surprise a ring is worn on the finger to represent eternal love that surpasses time, space, and worldly things. So much can be projected onto this archetypal image because it mimics the Earth's orbit around our great sun and the intimate bond between two lovers. It is the micro and macro united. That's honeybee you to rep. Every single bee matters in the hive. We all have a purpose. We cannot survive without each other. What you do impacts me, no matter how many levels out that is. This card calls us to deepen connection with self, other, and the world at large. Meanwhile, there may be a literal ring waiting to adorn your finger. So Cancer North Node people, maybe you are getting ready to have someone put a ring on it. All right. When light, connectedness, humility, sacred cycles. When dark, unconscious repetition, starving for connection. Okay. So what were the other um, oracle cards that I pulled out? Okay, looking at past life influences, things that may be impacting you right now. Imprisonment or slavery. I don't have to say a whole lot about that. Mother, father, great mother, father, where are you? Where are you? And what kind of souls are on that mission to take that role to help us all collectively understand all of this? strong how loving how willing to upset the gradual progression of humanity. I mean, my God, some people are so narcissistic to think that human beings are above other living beings, including earth, including animals, including, including, you know, children, I mean, they're human, but you, you, you know what I'm saying, that the power over the powerless, and at the bottom of the deck was male, female, and, um,
there's a controlled and a controlling aspect, right? If Cancer is in your north node, Capricorn is in your south node. If Cancer is in your north node, that is the mother. If Capricorn is in your south node, that is the father. The masculine in the south node, the feminine energies in the north node, it doesn't necessarily mean an actual woman who is a mother and an actual man who is a father. It is archetypal energy where power and masculine dominance influenced your life Capricorn in the south node whatever that means to you okay this is a general read what you are working out right now is the access between the masculine and the feminine and that you may have played out one role and you are now experiencing the other. And that that may be challenging for you because you, you don't know it. It may also be uh, enlightening, I think, you know, um, to uh, integrate the two. What I keep seeing in readings uh, that I've been doing lately um, is what appears to be an integration of the masculine and the feminine within the particular reading for that particular person, right? Um, because we all have that energy um, available to us, the, the masculine and the feminine. And it seems to be coming together or being um, prodded to integrate and to <sighs> balance out. What are the possible life purposes to consider currently? Okay. Freedom. You're free to do what you choose. What does freedom mean to you? What does freedom look like? Who is freedom for? What do you want to do with the notion of freedom? What would the world look like if everyone was free to be authentic, to free to be themselves? Honey, be you. Honey, be you. What would that look like to be free of the shackles of shame or ego or fear or power uh, plays or... Well, that's part of fear. So, you know, you may be here to help or be a champion of freedom in whatever way that looks. It does. I'm not. I'm not saying anything except for. How would you champion freedom? How would you put that back out um, into your world and in this thus the collective um, when you felt free, when you were free to be, right? And the bottom of the deck is infinite abundance. You're fully supported as you devote yourself to your divine life purpose. Okay. 
So I'm free. It, uh, there's a saying, what would you do if you could not fail? If you knew you would not fail. What would that be? What would it be if you weren't afraid that your slice of the pie wasn't going to be lost if someone else had their slice of the pie, right? And, you know, Cancer North Node, I, this is, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm not saying, making judgments, saying anything except that these are the cards that came up and it's so interesting that this is what is on our collective stage right now. What is being worked out? It started in the Cancer Capricorn nodal axis, is moved into the Gemini Sagittarian axis. What are we going to do? What are we going to do with this, right? Mother, father, Compassion. I, I, I don't even have the words. I'm so tired. Um, you know, what are we going to do with all of this? Okay. So I'm going to put all these away. And we'll look at your reading now. So we're going to look at... We keep the orphan in the womb up here, and we're going to see what are the current challenges for you. Again, I shuffled all these. Ah, King of Cups. Wow. All right. The King of Cups. Cancer Pisces Scorpio. He is someone who is grounded in his emotionality and his emotions. He's the feminine masculine, if you will. He is a nurturer. He leads with his heart. He leads with compassion. He does not get turned upside down with the emotions or upheavals of the day or his ego. He's the feminine masculine. He's integrated the two. It's so funny because I saw it when queens were coming out. In some of the other readings, they were definitely the integrated masculine with the feminine. It's okay. Okay. So challenge right now, right? Um, okay, justice is at the bottom of the deck. Karma. And then the hierophant. Grief, temperance. So, <laughs> I don't even know how much more evident this could be, but we're looking at karmic systems. We're looking at karma. We're looking at um, this will be repeated until it is learned. And we're also looking at the exact definition of justice. What is justice? What is our law? What? How do we enforce or set up or create laws based in what we know is justice? Based on what we know are our... Uh, religious, moral, and ethical ideals. 
What are we grieving? As a result of a lack of balance in these entities, we're needing a call. Strength is needed to balance, to remain balanced in our grief to follow and remember and teach and model our ideals, our um, morals, our ethics for justice. This is the challenge, right? Why is this your challenge, right? Why is this your challenge? See if I can. Uh, all right. Let's get a clarifier. Why is this Cancer's challenge? Cancer North Node. What is this about? So, Cancer North Node, you may be going through your own legal um, battles, concerns. Uh, you know, in my mind, as I'm reading this, I'm still kind of stuck in the collective, and I apologize for that. But just, it's so like, I have no words. Okay. Um, so, five of pentacles at the bottom of the deck, feeling left out in the cold. Um, and the high priestess. Uh, so, we've got, once again, that Neptunian, um, Piscean energy. What is going on? You may be challenged right now um, in a legal situation where you are feeling left out in the cold and you are being challenged to draw on your intuition, to trust your intuition, to remain grounded um, and and stable and trust, trust in the trust in the process of giving birth of, of what it takes to give birth to the next thing. Um, that you are part of the cosmos um, of the cycles, cycles of life, cycles of death, cycle, cycles. Okay. Um, what strengths do I bring forward? It may be a challenge for you, Cancer, because your south node is so much more practical. Um, it's just so much more earth-based, and you being a water sign, this could be challenging for you, even though um, it's your north sign, it may be your, your inclination. So... Try to stick, try to, to learn to trust your, your intuitive hits, your emotions, your gut, whatever you want to call that, okay? Whoa. 
What was the question? What strengths and gifts do I bring forward? Hmm. That is a lot of cards. Okay, I'm hearing take them. So we've got the five of cups, okay? Grief, mourning, loss. Turn around and pick up those two cups that are still standing, okay? Cross that bridge. Temperance, balancing spiritual with the material remaining one foot on land, one foot in the water, much like Capricorn, although this is a card of Sagittarius. But you are 100% capable of being in the flow, right? This is a strength that you are bringing forward with you. Uh, strength, the strength card. Being able to harness sort of your more base animalistic tendencies um, uh, the Capricorn can be, you know, sort of victim to, but Capricorn has learned um, hopefully <laughs> um, and is a south node to to integrate those impulses for a higher purpose, right? Meaning, it's okay to enjoy life and all the hedonistic pleasures of life with a certain amount of restraint and strength in the face of loss, in the face of hedonism, in the face of power plays, right? Knight of Pentacles, moving, coming, moving, moving slowly, deliberately, practically, with your coin to build something, it's not impulsive. It may feel very, very slow, but you are so dependable in whatever it is that you want to build and whatever it is that you are thinking about birthing. That practical, planning, deliberate, dedicated, energy you are bringing forth from a place of balance and strength, taking time to recognize that here's an opportunity and thinking about what exactly it is you want to manifest and where exactly you want to manifest it. Could be someplace foreign, could be someplace you have never been before, doing something you didn't, it's all new. You don't quite have the complete idea or plan, but you're considering it. You have some inklings, you have some idea, right? It's in the womb still. Moving into calmer waters, 
possibly after a time of feeling, once again, left out in the cold, abandoned, orphaned. Um, there is a lot of potential here, but you still need to move out of the conflict and the pain um, and let the wheel turn. Remember to weigh all of your options uh, and stay out of delusions by being very intentional, very intentional in your meditations and in your um, time spent recognizing that this is a bun in the oven time, if you will. Okay, I'm not ready to birth anything right now. I'm growing it. I'm nourishing it. I'm nurturing it, whatever it is. Okay. And the strength is being able to be in that space. And it is a strength because, oh, Lord, a lot of us really struggle with uncertainty, really struggle with. You know, someone tell me what I need to do. Someone tell me what to choose. Someone tell me how to do this. Someone, you know, I, I, I can't be in this space. I'm just going to have to, like, jump. I'm just going to have to do something, you know, real quick. And that's not... That's not where you need to be. And that is a strength of yours as the master builder ruled by Saturn. I'm sorry, your south node is in Capricorn, Capricorn ruled by Saturn. Um, and those are past life lessons of building, you know, moving steadily, determined uh, through the earth energy um, and uh, slowly and doing the hard work and maintaining your vision uh, while also in your north node being very open to connecting to your emotions and what feels right and your intuition and, um, you know, being a nurturing person and being in your feels. You know, you don't have to, like, choose either or. We're integrating them. Remember, the male and the female, we're integrating them. So, okay. What tendencies to leave behind? Cancer North Node, what tendencies to leave behind? Wow, we're already at an hour. Tendencies to leave behind. Cancer North Node, tendencies to leave behind. I really, oh no, man, it's too much, too much. Can't have these many cards each time. I kind of am getting the feeling that so many cards, and this is just, ow. Um, so right on the money of, you know, kind of where we are. Um, it's because it's where we are. Um. Uh, collectively so I feel like I don't really actually need to explain a whole lot more than what I've already said but we'll get these cards uh, okay so what tendencies to leave behind for tendencies to leave behind for cancer what happened there
Oh my gosh, you guys, this is crazy. Um, okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Tons of seeds to leave behind. You know, scattered energy, too much, too fast. Um, maybe even believing in. Yeah, I think tendencies to leave behind is, um, I'm sorry, I told you I was so tired, uh, but I, I'm so behind in these readings. Um, maybe, you know, attempts to hurry up the process, you know, after the, the ending um, or even before the ending, like I just, you know, just too much. We've got to like get it all figured out. We've got to, you know, do something. Um, and, 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 and you, you don't need to, um, be patient with the process as these archetypes, uh, cards came up. So these are the tendencies to leave behind. You don't have to rush in and fix it. You don't have to come up with the solution right now. We need to sit in it a little bit, okay? Um, allow some of this to marinate. Allow our feels to come up. Allow us to contemplate what the next step might look like or the next or the birthing process might look like based in compassion in our feels, okay? Not rushing in, not having to have it all figured out right now. All right. What to focus on? Yes, this is a big one. What to focus on to contribute to the collective? What to focus on to contribute? to the collective. I hope you can see your cards. What to focus on to contribute to the collective. making your coin, right? Um, a lot of times I see this card as sort of like the cats in the cradle. Um, but let's see, at the bottom of the deck is eight of swords, limiting beliefs, where I believe I'm stuck and I'm not. Um, you know, she's kind of bound. I always say she's kind of bound up by toilet paper. Um, she could break out at any time, but these are thoughts. These are thoughts that limit her. And um, so what, what to focus on to contribute to the collective. How do we how do we change our thoughts about wealth about Oh 
God, how do I articulate this? How do we change our thoughts in order to heal in order to understand that there is enough for everyone to experience this. Ten of Pentacles. How do we, how do you impact limiting beliefs and an understanding that there are enough, there is enough for everyone to achieve this. The home, the family, the car, the 2.5, you know, the legacies, the the sense that our communities are all deserving of creating wealth that not only provides comfort for us, but can be passed on to new generations and that new generations can build and give back to their elders and it's this you know sort of like cyclical ring community that says everyone can be in an um, in abundance and is worthy of you know abundance and, you know, how are you going to put this out into the world? How do we create this out in the world? How do we birth it out into the world? How do we understand unconditional love, grace, um, forgiveness, peace, harmony, This is what you bring to the collective. A sense that this is possible. What obstacles to be aware of? What obstacles to be aware of? Ten of the, oh, God, it's almost 11. Oh, I'm tired. Okay. What obstacles to be aware of? <laughs> obstacles to be aware of for Cancer North Node. Cancer North Node people, what obstacles to be aware of? Distribution of wealth, right? You can help to nurture and birth a new understanding of distribution of wealth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 
obstacles to be aware of. Where are we going to plant this new opportunity that is showing up for us? What are we going to create? Are we going to create and be a master magician? A master who says, here are what my spiritual, ethical, and moral, moral ideals are, and I'm going to manifest them with the opportunity, the money, the coin, the seed that I have. I'm going to manifest those things based on my ethics and plant them into the earth and manifest them because I have everything I want, I need, or am I going to be a trickster and pretend and manipulate because I can't believe that there is enough. I cannot believe in the abundance. I cannot I cannot tolerate my own fear of being abandoned, rejected, left behind. The wheel of fortune must turn. It is turned. possible obstacle is in where you are going to plant your coin. What is the seed that you are going to plant? Make sure that it is based in integrity with what your stated ideals are. And I hope that they are based in an understanding that each one of us contains an orphan and that your inner orphan is also manifesting as well as others. fear and pain of rejection, the fear and pain of abandonment, the fear and pain of being left alone, the fear and pain of, you know, who cares about me? Mm -hmm. A new idea, thought, inspiration, or enlightenment is necessary. swords at the bottom of the deck something needs to die emperor involving leadership governance okay uh, how the collective needs you how the collective needs you Cancer, North Node. Hmm. Yeah, that Five of Pentacles wants to come out. I don't like seeing half of my head. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, how the collective needs you. really needs you to take action, really needs you to move swiftly, um, passionately, uh, with all of your brave heart involved in order to be a leader of, oh yeah, wow, um, to be a leader in your community, in a leader of commerce, a leader a business leader, an entrepreneur, newer, um, someone who really is is looked at as someone who can uh, 
manifest uh, and be a business leader. But this has to come from a place of passion and a place of understanding that, you know, we all need to be able to um, have the opportunities and opportunities and um, freedom to create this. Whatever it is that makes us feel that we have achieved that goal of setting up our home and a legacy. The collective needs you to be a leader in this way, drawing from your Capricorn South Node, but being driven by your emotions and your compassion, not in a reactive way, but in that feminine, divine feminine, nurturing, compassionate manner. Um, I'm not saying the Knight of Wands is not masculine. He is. Um, and he is, he doesn't hold back and he's riding in, you know, to save the day somewhat haphazardly and it may just require you to do that you know it may require you to do that as a leader <laughs> underneath that is the hierophant I mean I don't even know what to say like, let's just go down the line. And then there are those that do not have and are left behind. No, you need to be a champion for the underdog. Just saying. I how these things all came up. All right. Uh, best possible outcome for cancer. Yeah, you're going to be a leader. We need you to lead. We need you to integrate. We need you to um, uh, become someone that may be able to set new codes, new laws, new um, structures, covenants, whatever it is, um, for leadership, for the patriarchy even, or the patriarchal um, kind of God, the sun's dumb. Um, for the traditionally male dominated rulerships, we need you to infuse all that you are to be a new kind of leader, to be a new type of leader, right? 
here's that Piscean energy from a new perspective, from a, an enlightened perspective, okay? Victor. Best possible outcome is you will be a leader. An enlightened, enlightened leader. Okay? All right. So, goosies are here. Goosies are in the house. As are yawnies. <laughs> And right now my clock says 11 and it's 121 on the clock for this video. Um, okay, let's get a blessing from the Blessed Bee deck by Lucy Cavendish. A blessing and a prayer for you, North Node Cancer, North Node Cancer people. Bless you, bless you, bless you. you. We need new leadership. We need new leadership. We need a new vision for leadership. Okay. Blessed be, blessed be. What does Cancer North know? Oh. North all right all right all right we're taking it this one blessing for bringing prosperity and a blessing to shield and safeguard you at the bottom of the deck a blessing to bring prosperity 21 21 resonates to three um harmony uh, a blessing for you so that you will always have enough to support you and see you thrive. Didn't I say that somewhere? Like there's enough pieces of the pie doesn't mean you are going to lose out. Uh, but let's see what this says. Dearest friend, may there be more than what it is you need, yet always let you be appreciative of all the gifts you have been given. May the natural prosperity and gifts of each season be yours, the fullness and wide open arms of summer and its rich harvests. May the falling of the leaves of autumn bring you the urge to let go and bring in and do what must be done. Let the depths of winter bring you the riches of the inner light in life and cold reminding you of the great golden heart at the center of you and allow the spring bring to you the green shoot, pushing through new beginnings. Wow. May there be plenty of adventures beyond your home and hearth. Let there be, su let there be sufficient so that there is always wood in your fire, food in the pot and light shining down upon you. May the flow of abundance that nature reveals within all of her faces be yours. And whenever there is need, know it will be met again and again with the blessings of the universe. For they will flow to you and you may gather them up in your arms and create more and more of whatever it is you need, whatever it is your soul calls out for. You will be able to create a home. You will be able to... Nourish yourself and those you love. You will no longer struggle or attempt to force. Instead, you will enter the stream of plenty that flows all about you and is now yours. Let prosperity, real and true, be yours, and may there be gratitude and charity and generosity from you to meet the bounty of the world that now flows to you. Blessings of prosperity to you, friend, let bounty be shared and its ways taught so that all may know the simple secrets of growing enough for all that is needed. Growing enough for all that is needed. Planting those seeds from an enlightened space. There is 
enough. You are, and we need you to be a leader to understand that. Lead the orphan children that exists within all of us and understanding the cycle and the circles of life. Cancer North Node, be you. Remember that you matter in your life, in your purpose, in your trajectory, in your path. All matter. We need you. Thank you so much for being here. Be well.